Good morning. We welcome everybody here on this uh, beautiful Sunday, uh, kind of a fallish uh, kind of a day, but uh, thank you for being with us and taking the time out of your day to join with us. Whether you're here in person or online, um, your presence is greatly appreciated and um, we look forward to the message here today. Pastor Brad is uh, enjoying some uh, time off uh, this week and next week. And so today we are joined uh, with uh, us is uh, the Reverend Mark Farron. Um, and Mark is uh, not uh, somebody that we haven't seen before. He's been here um, to our uh, worship center um, a couple of times. Uh, and one was way back when we were going through COVID, both Mark and his wife, um, the Reverend uh, Ivy Merrill, uh, both joined uh, Pastor Brad and Linda on the porch on the gulch uh, at, at uh, the Kittery Point home. Um, so we welcome you very much uh, to, to our church this morning and we look forward to your message. Um, so there's uh, some announcements here in the bulletin. One is, is that for a pastoral care, if there's any that is needed, the Reverend Mark Stewart, who is uh, interim minister up at the Kittery Point Church, um, is on call for emergency purposes. And if um, it's the name sounds familiar, it should, because Mark is the son of the Reverend, uh, late Reverend uh, Ian Stewart, who was our interim pastor here uh, for a while. So um, that is nice. And uh, the ladies are doing a uh, dinner out, I believe, this Thursday. Is that correct? On the 31st at 6 o'clock. And all the ladies uh, of the church are invited. Um, and to see you if uh, they have any questions. Is that correct? Or who? Nadine. Okay, see Nadine if there's any questions about um, the ladies uh, and the doorkeepers uh, having dinner, but all ladies of the church are welcome to um, attend that. So, any other announcements? Okay. <laughs> Let us read responsible, uh, responsibly to the call to community printed in our bulletins. We have come to this place as blessed people. We don't feel blessed. Help us to remember that God blesses all people, not just the mighty, but the least of these. Please stand as you are able as we sing our opening hymn, number 16, Come Thou, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
Let us join together in our gathering prayer. O Holy One, wherever we are, wherever we look, in our seeing and hearing and sensing your reveal, your presence to us, filled with love, grace, and hope. With each encounter, we are changed. Help us, O Holy One, to live our lives as a reflection of you. May we walk among our brothers and sisters as a blessing, bearing light into dark places, hope to displace despair, and love that cast out hate. Gather us to be your people. Amen. Let us prepare to receive the good news as we pray together. Almighty God, in your hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge, open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom through Christ our Lord, amen. A scripture reading this morning comes from the book of Genesis chapter 12, verses one through nine. Let us listen for the word of God. 
Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse, and in you all the families of the earth should be blessed. So Abram, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran, and Abram took his wife, Sarai, and his brother's son, Lot, and all the possessions that they had gathered, and the persons whom they had acquired in Haran. And they set forth to go to the land of Canaan. And when they had come to the land of Canaan, Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, to the Lord of Moab. And at the time, the Canaanites were in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your offspring I will give you this land. So he built there an altar to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And from there he moved on to the hill country on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent. With Bethel on the west and I on the east, and there he built an altar to the Lord and invoked the name of the Lord. And Abram journeyed on by stages towards Negem. Amen. Thank you, Tom. It's an honor to be back with you again today. Good to see some familiar faces and some new ones. And uh, as Tom had said, my wife Ivy has been here before, and, and I have as well, so I feel a little bit comfortable up here. Uh, not, not totally, but, but you know, but, but, but okay, okay. Is this water? Good. Just wasn't sure. Are you a dreamer? A dreamer? Think about that for a moment. A young man called his mother and excitedly announced that he had just met the woman of his dreams. His mother said, why don't you send her flowers and invite her to a, your apartment for a home-cooked meal? Sound good? The day after the big date, his mother called to see how things had gone. Mom, the evening was a complete disaster, he said. She was not the woman of my dreams. Why? Didn't she come over, the mother said? Yes, he said, she came over, but she refused to cook. Hmm, I hear it groan over there, yeah. Are you a dreamer? Our scripture characters today, Abram and Sarai, who later became Abraham and Sarah, are dreamers. They were dreamers. Forget the fact that they were still able to father and mother children in their 90s. Anyone do that lately? Hmm. I was 42 when, uh, 41 when I married Ivy, and we had children right away. <laughs> she was a lot younger, but uh, not easy. The first dream for Abram and Sarai came when Abram was 75 years old. They were willing to believe God and set out on their journey to some unknown land without the security of country or kindred, but only the presence of of the living God. How many of us at age 75 or even 35 would be willing to make that kind of journey, that kind of commitment? Reverend Justin Tell exclaims, at first it seems like a rosy future, you know, a great nation, 
a new land, blessings promised to those who Abram blesses. What could Abram have to lose? He continues, several things come to mind, a sense of stability, worldly comfort, such as it was in those days, family ties, gone now were Abram's retirement plans or parties, no bridge games, no evening walks in suburbia with his wife, Sarai. Just imagine God coming before us today in worship during the announcements, interrupting us, and asking for volunteers to make that kind of journey. How many couples would be willing to go, or individuals? Would you be willing to go on a mission trip to help folks devastated by the fires in Hawaii, the floods in California, or homeless folks in Portland? But Abram and Sarai, despite their age, despite their physical conditions, despite the rick riskness of that journey, said yes to God. Yes. So they took all their possessions, a few family members, and relied on God. They had a dream. But I wonder if Abram really caught the larger vision, the one that many of us really don't see, the master plan that God gave to Abram in the scripture this morning. Genesis 12, two to three says this, I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. So what does it say next? That you will be a blessing. I will bless you so that you will be a blessing. What is God's overall plan? to make the Hebrews great, to separate out the chosen people in honor to honor them, to play favorites? No. The dreams and vision behind the blessing of the Hebrews is that they were to bless the world. And I believe that we are to do the same, aren't we? We are to be blessings. Amen? We're to be blessings. What are your dreams and visions here at the Second Christian Church of Kittery? I know it's not been easy during the COVID years, but I believe still God is still with us, still speaking like Abram and Sarai, and is ready to take us maybe on a new journey, a journey to bless others more and more. Wouldn't it be great if our vision was to help others, like the hymns that we sing. How many know that hymn, Showers of Blessings? Anybody know that? There shall be showers of blessings. This is the promise of love. And then the chorus, showers of blessings, showers of, showers of blessings we need. Mercy drops around us are failing, but for the showers we plead. Anybody know that? No Baptists in the group? You're a Baptist, right? Oh, no, okay. It's a good camp song. I'm a retired Baptist pastor, so. Or how about count your blessings, name them one by one. You know that one? You guys must be in the choir, right? Oh, okay, sorry, sorry. Count your blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Nobody? Okay, two people. That's all right. Well, we'll sing. Well, Fellowship Hour will teach it to you. God's blessings, count them one by one. Not of a new home, a new Hummer, but the blessings of God's grace, of God's love, of God's presence, that no matter who we are on life's journey, God is with us. So first of all, I believe that God has created us to dream. God created Abram and Sarai to dream and envision it wasn't enough for them to just stay in one place, physically or spiritually. From the first humans, God said to them, I have given you this great creation, and I want you to dream about the gift I've given you. People who make a difference in life often are dreamers. Are you? My dad, who was a pastor, my granddad was a pastor, so here I am. 
but he wanted to be a professional baseball player. Played some town leagues. He took me to Fenway Park many times, and twice he caught foul balls at Fenway, from, both from Mickey Mantle. Yeah. I didn't realize some of you are old enough to remember Mickey Mantle, but that's all right. He had a chance once to bat against Whitey Ford, another Yankee left-hander. Some of you may remember. On the off-season, Whitey was going around places in Maine. We're in Maine. And uh, in the afternoon, his team was going to play against Whitey. But he didn't. He couldn't. You know why? My mother said he couldn't because it was on Sunday, the Sabbath. At that time, he felt that you couldn't play any sports on the Sabbath, so he missed it. Dad wanted to be a pro ball player, but he only became a pastor. Wow, thankfully, thankfully. What are your dreams and visions for yourself in this church? God has created us all to dream. The Bible is full of dreamers. You just look, you know, Adam and Eve and Noah and Sarah and Ruth and Joseph and Jeremiah and John and Martha and Peter and Paul and Mary and many others. We are created to dream. So secondly, it's not enough simply to dream. We must do what the Bible people did. Step out in faith to make the dream a reality. We are called to dream, and the dream is to be a blessing. We probably would not have known the names of Abram and Sarai if they hadn't dreamt, hadn't left. They became Abraham and Sarah. Are you willing to live out your dreams? Many of us are great dreamers at night while sleeping, you know. Many of us are good dreamers in our pajamas. Now, you may have noticed there's a new trend going around of people wearing the drama, their pajamas all over the place in the malls. Have you seen it? Anybody ever done it here? You no? Know? Okay. Many of us are good dreamers in our pajamas, but how many of us are good dreamers while we are awake, while we're living? How many of us live out our dreams as God called us to do to bless? As someone else has put it, don't wait for your ship to come in, swim out to it. Or as Walter P. Chrysler said, the reason so many people never get anywhere in life because when opportunity knocks, they are out in the yard looking for four-leaf clovers. Hmm. It's like playing the lottery. I mean, how many chances do you have? It's like one in a million, right, or more, you know? Good thing we don't base our church budget on winning the lottery, right? God plants the seed of a dream in a human heart and then waits to see what we'll do with it. The dream is not a billion dollars or a million. It's, you know, sometimes simple things like giving someone a hug, offering to take them a meal, you know, just supporting them, listening. Many people at Abraham and Sarah's old age are simply willing to sit on the front porch and rock. Others are willing to rock and roll, if you will, to act. I'm glad that many people at any age are willing to be blessed by God and be a blessing to others. Unfortunately, many people in our world seem to want the gift to curse, not to bless. Notice in verse 3, it says, I will bless those who bless you, and the one that curse you, I will curse. Now, some folks take this as an opportunity to curse others. Notice who does the cursing. Abraham? Sarah? No, God. Leave it up to God. I remember listening to a psychiatrist on a radio program years ago, Dr. Sobel was his name. He asked if you could push a button to his radio audience, push a button and kill somebody without anybody knowing, would you do it? Would you? Guess how many people phoned in and said 
they would do it percentage-wise. Guess how many people sent percentage-wise said they'd kill somebody as long as he got away with it? 75%. Yeah. Wow. Then there are other people who want to curse others just because of their skin color. And some people just want to forget about our country's history. Let's forget about slavery or Jim Crow laws or lynchings because that's so long ago. How about the history of yesterday? Jacksonville, Florida. Hmm. Happened again. Talk about a lynching. On the same day that people were in Washington celebrating the 60th anniversary of the March on Washington. Actually, that anniversary is tomorrow, August 28th, but they celebrated it yesterday. I miss Dr. King and John Lewis, who I had the opportunity of meeting twice in my life. At least Andrew Young was there, and he said, I'm no ways tired at age 91. I'm so glad that at this church you are a blessing to others. I've heard about your ministries and missions locally and beyond. You are no ways tired, are you? Thanks to all who keep this ministry and mission going. I know from Pastor Brad that you are a missions church. Thanks for blessing others. The challenge is to continue. So thirdly, Lastly, because all Baptist ministers have to have three points, God has created us to dream, to be a blessing, and I know we can accomplish those dreams. Why? Because God is the greatest dreamer of all. God's the greatest dreamer. God dreamed of this world of, of verdant trees and, and blue skies and sparkling dreams. And how many have ever climbed Mount Monadnock? Anybody? One person, All right, good, a couple of people, yeah. Hmm. I lived in Keene for many years and would go over to Mount Monadnock, too, not too far away, and there was this place where you could, secret place, I won't tell you where it is, but uh, you could go out, uh, walk up the, a path about 20 minutes, and go out into a ledge and look down upon the area. I wrote a few sermons there. That was my sermons on the mount. It was beautiful looked at God's gift that God has given to us. Because I had to stop by Kimball's ice cream all the time after that. <laughs> some of you know. However, we've destroyed some of that beauty, haven't we? Sometimes we've messed up the dream. So what did God do when we mess it up? What does God do? Does God abandon the dream? We are reminded that God sent a child, a savior, a dreamer to live for us, to continue the dream blessing to share with us forgiveness and love and hope that the dream is still alive. So are we waiting till Christmas? <laughs> Do you remember that? How about now? I don't know all your dreams. When is the next annual meeting? This fall. You'll hear more of your dreams then. You'll probably hear, if you're like most churches, how to balance the budget how to keep up the property, but I also hope and pray you will hear new ways to serve your neighbors. I don't know all your dreams, but I do know that God is with you and he's the ultimate dreamer, or she's the ultimate dream. <laughs> if you follow this leader, then with God, all dreams are possible. We know that Dr. King was a dreamer I have a dream, he proclaimed, that all of God's children will be able to hold hands together and not be judged by the color of their skin, but the content of their, you know, character. This dreamer was almost, well, he was assassinated at, anybody know how old he was? 39. He almost was assassinated at the age of 30. Some of you may know that story when an emotionally ill woman attacked him with a letter opener. 
Doctors saved him, but they said if he had even sneezed on the way from where he was to the hospital, he would have died. Dr. King received letters from presidents and kings and famous actors and actresses and politicians, but the one that he appreciated the most came from a young girl. You remember this? I'll share it with you. This is what it said. Dear Dr. King, I'm an eighth grade student at White Plains High School. While it shouldn't matter, I'd like to mention that I am a white girl. I read in the paper of your misfortune and your suffering. And I read that if you had sneezed, you would have died. I'm simply writing to say, I'm so glad you didn't sneeze. Hmm. I'm so glad he didn't sneeze either. But I hope and pray every day that the dream is still alive. Is your dream still alive? God's dream to help us be a blessing. At your annual meeting, maybe Pastor Brad could invite you all to come in your pajamas <laughs> as dreamers. Hmm. I won't ask him to do that as long as you take this challenge. To dream while you're awake, to dream while living, to make your dreams a reality in your hearts, in your minds, in your spirits. If we do that, I believe like Abraham and Sarah, God will show you the promised land, that you will be blessed, and more importantly, that you will be a blessing. Join God in this dream. Amen. It's time now to share our joys and concerns before we go to prayer together. I will mention just a couple, then those of you can, can share. Certainly the, the weather conditions around the world, not easy. The floods, fires, the storms, but the storms also of racism and gun violence as well. I can encourage you. Who else can we pray for for a situation? Yes, Jim. Thank you. Alexis. Alexis. Thank you, Alexis. Anyone else? Yes. Sharon and Matt. Sharon and Matt. Thank you. What else? Now, my tradition in the churches that I've served is that we cannot go to the prayer without at least having one joy. Is that a joy? Yes, young lady. A shower. Okay. Who was, who was that for? That was my A wedding shower for your son Jesse and Rachel, and it rained. Except no showers during the wedding shower. I got it. I got it. That was clever. That was good. Anything else before we pray? Yes. Okay. Scott's sister Dana.
So your daughter Samara is, is coming home. Good, thank you, amen. This first and then. Wow. This young lady is 100? Wow. Thank you, Natalie. Nice to have you here today. Nice to have you here today. So, glad you're here. And there was one other over here. Yes. more children to the family. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Please join me in prayer. Oh God, we are grateful to be here today. Whether we're a couple years old or 100, It's good to be with your community of faith, realizing that there's a community of faith all over this world, praying for peace and justice and grace. We'd ask, oh God, that you would be with the folks that were just mentioned We need encouragement, support, healing, and we're thankful for the joys in life as well. For new families, for families returning, for possibilities of new commitments in marriage. We're thankful that you're with us and the joys and the sorrows. We ask that you would bless this church, guide them with your spirit, continue to help them to be a blessing as you have blessed them. May every bitter thought and each nagging worry that we have about what we've done or what we have failed to do to be washed out in the ebbing sea of your boundless mercy. Lead us with your gentle inspiration to sense in each moment eternal depths, immeasurable goodness, and the possibilities of tomorrow. We thank you, O oh God, that you write upon our hearts the blessings, your grace, your love, And we ask that you would write them also upon our hands and our feet. We'd ask this in the Lord's prayer together, praying our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now it's time for our offering that we give not only of our, our treasures of money, but our treasures of blessings we've been given. You can 
place your offering in the offering plates as you leave, or give online, or give to your charity that you may support. But be a blessing as we receive today's offering. Share this together. May these gifts bring light to those who walk in darkness, hope to those who live in despair, and justice to those who are oppressed. To this end, we dedicate our offerings and ourselves. Amen. The final hymn is 614, and I want to thank Mike for playing that uh, song, Make Me a Blessing. Some of you may know that. And thank you for sharing that with us. But we're going to sing, I'm going to live so God can use me. Send us forth, God, to be blessings wherever we go, not just here, but wherever we go as blessed people. Send us forth. Amen. Amen.